We are here in the nation's capital at the National Weather Service headquarters building, ready to uncover the future of meteorology. What better person to talk to than Ken Graham, the director of the National Weather Service? He's responsible for the day-to-day -day civilian weather operations for the United States, its territories, adjacent waters, and ocean areas. Join us in an exclusive interview with the director who recently began his tenure in 2022 after decades of experience in the agency. I think you look at uh, all the operational experience to be the first director to, to go from intern to director, I still have to to, to think about that a little bit, right? So I have all the operations over the years, but it shapes you. You know, you go through that many hurricanes, you go through that many floods um, and, and tornadoes and, and the events that you go through over the years and also the surveys. So it doesn't end even after the, you know, after the storm, you still have the surveys to look at, you see the impact. So I think I've really been shaped by, by seeing the, the science part of it, the service delivery, but also seeing the impact to people. If you like this video and wanna see more like it, click on the like button, it really helps us out a lot. And of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, it's totally free. And click on that notification bell, that way you always know whenever we drop a new video or whenever we go live. Ken's extensive background in National Weather Service operations significantly informs his approach as director, placing a strong emphasis on the well-being and development of his agency's people. It's no surprise he spent the first months on the job meeting the people of his agency and learning from their experiences. So I've spent a significant amount of time visiting with every single one of our regions. So I've been in the Pacific, I've been to Alaska, I've been all over the country really to visit with our offices, talk to all the employees about what are the issues, what are things that we need to work on, and as a result, we've, we've, we've done some things, the pillars, we've come up with our people, our infrastructure, our future, looking at, at, at where we're going as an agency. In his first year as director, Ken has started to develop a vision forward. Known as Ken's 10, the director has outlined 10 initiatives to advance weather forecasting services to the American people. In, in 10 years, I, I fully would like to see a National Weather Service that's nimble, flexible, mobile, eye-to-eye -eye with decision makers. We have got to really help with the decision making because you, you think about uh, the increased frequency in, in these heavy rain events, you think about the increased frequency in these big impact type of events. The decision maker needs more help than ever. We have to be there. We're the experts. We want to right, be there right there eye to eye with those decision makers in these emergency operations centers. We want to be on the front lines to help with this decision making. That's where I see the weather service going. We're going to cut the cord. We're going to be portable. We can do the job not just in the office but from anywhere. How then does the National Weather Service look like in a modern digital age? Ken provided us with a vision. Yeah, we're actually about ready to do, redo our website. It's exciting. So weather.gov has been around since the 90s. It's a, it's a wonderful website. There's lots of information on there, but how do we think lighter? There's fewer people using our website on actual PCs, uh, more mobile. They're looking at mobile technology, looking at uh, ways to get that in the field. And you got to think about bandwidth. You got to think about how you deliver services to, to people that need it. Not everybody has 500 megabits per second. So how do we look at our new website to be much more mobile? So we're looking at redoing that. We're looking at language translation, not as an afterthought, but from the beginning of, of, of the development of these services. Discussing the multilingual aspect, Ken shared his enthusiasm about groundbreaking developments at the National Weather Service. He looks forward to a future where information from the agency will be accessible in a variety of non-English languages. For years, we've been trying to uh, translate information to Spanish, and I had so much experience with that at the National Hurricane Center, but it was, it was people on top of the jobs they already had, right? They were trying to translate this on top of putting out warnings and forecasts. So we are actually looking at language transition, uh, language transition by translation software. And, and it's a fascinating uh, probability here that, that, that we've been able to, to look at because it's been uh, using artificial intelligence, machine learning. It is really taking the language, translating it, and then letting the humans, the experts in, in Spanish or other languages, correct the computer and it learns from that to make the, the, the much more understandable and correct. I mean, that is amazing. So we are looking at translating our products into Spanish. We're gonna keep going to, to other languages after that. And then we redo the website and, and think about new products and services. We wanna have that as a, as, as a thought at the beginning, not an afterthought. So if you do it that way, it, it's a better product in the end for everyone to get from a service equitability standpoint.
These new approaches, however, require more than just the physical science of forecasting. We've hired social scientists in the National Weather Service to look at um, our, our products and services. Colors matter. If you look at a graphic on how people interpret that information, what's on there uh, really matters in the words, the pictures, it all matters in how that's interpreted. So meteorologists are wonderful, hydrologists are wonderful, but sometimes a scientist isn't the best person to develop a product for the public. The new integrated approach Ken is envisioning is contributing to weather forecasts and operations, but how does this even look like in a changing climate? Every single day we're getting more questions about uh, the forecast further out in time. So, you know, we're very familiar with the Weather Ready Nation, um, the Climate Ready Nation is a conversation that we really need to have because if you think about it, uh, there's this sub-seasonal, right? There's this whole beyond the seven, ten days, what's going to happen next month? What's going to happen this summer? And you think about we have an El Nino situation and California is so saturated already from all the storms we've had from these atmospheric rivers. So what's El Nino going to do? It's usually, historically, more rain. So there's more conversation, there's more need to talk about this sub-seasonal uh, type of uh, uh, climate products and services. And then the long term, what's the, the, the sea level rise? You think about what's the change over time from a climate perspective. There's more and more demand for those products and services in, in, from a climate perspective uh, and also the impact-based decision support, not just short term, but very long term for planning purposes. So it's important, not just a weather ready nation, we've got to be a climate ready nation as things change. Our time with the director has given us a unique glimpse to the future of the National Weather Service, a future shaped by dedication and innovation. Before concluding our visit, we asked Ken what inspired him to become a meteorologist. You'll find his story to be intriguing. Growing up in Arizona, everyone's like, well, how did you think about hurricanes? How did you think about weather? It was the monsoon season. It was a year that we got evacuated as a kid. So we were evacuated from our home in the middle of the night. Think about being a little kid and being, being woken up in the middle of the night and pulled out and driving away because a flood is coming. It was a big flood event. And we didn't flood, but it was very close. There was a bridge washed out. It was a big event. I didn't understand it. I really didn't understand it. So I had an old set of encyclopedias that were very, very old. And I started looking at it and going, that was a tropical system coming up from Mexico that fed all that moisture uh, into Arizona. So it was absolutely an, an amazing thing. And I kept studying it and studying it. And my mom told me. My mom told me every single day on my calendar, I wrote down the temperature, I wrote down hot, cold, rainy, dusty. I took all these observations for years and years and years. Since about six years old, I put that on my calendar. So I was very fascinated. It took a traumatic event like being evacuated and got me really interested in weather. So I wanted to do this since I was six years old. We thank him and his continued partnership with MyRadar as we keep you ahead of the storm. Until next time, I'm meteorologist Joseph Trujillo Falcón. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.